الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد واهتدى ومن يعصيهما فانه قد غوى وانه لا يضر الا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا ان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان خير الامور عوازمها وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اعلموا ان من حياه الدنيا لعب وله وزينه وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر وتكاثر في الاموال والاولاد كمثل غيث اعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فطراه مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما وفي الاخره عذاب شديد ومغفره من الله ورضوان وما الحياه الدنيا الا متاع الغرور اما بعد Indeed, all praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we ask for His help, we beg for His forgiveness, and we seek refuge and protection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of ourselves and the evil consequences of our deeds. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides to the straight path, no one can misguide them. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides, no one can guide them back to the truth. And we bear witness today that there is no deity, no object worthy of any act of worship except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As He is the one without any associates, partners or equals. And finally we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is His messenger and servant. I recited uh, from Surah Al- uh, one verse from Surah Al-Hadid, verse 20. Uh, Surah Hadid is, uh, is Surah 57. Uh, and inshallah, in the, in the time that we have today, I want to remind ourselves, uh, myself first, and, and inshallah, uh, uh, all of us, about the priorities of, of this life that we are in. Where we live, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us this comprehensive, this comprehensive uh, perspective of what this life is and what we should put priority to. So inshallah, we'll, we'll go through this ayah very quickly. And if you have time, obviously go into the, uh, the fasir of this ayah. It's very beautiful. Um, but inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in this surah, which is a madani surah, that means that it's geared towards and the audience is the Muslim community. The audience is that someone has established in their iman that they know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now we are establishing the, the practice of that thing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts this ayah with five things. Know that this dunya, know that this world is of five things. So let's go through what these are. Laibu is play, amusement. Lahu is entertainment. Zina is beauty. Is competing with one another. Is, is, is boasting to one another and with a kathirun fil amwal is com- competing with one another in wealth and children. So Allah mentioned these five things. By themselves, if we look at them, they're just concepts. There's nothing wrong or nothing, there's right and wrong from them, but there's uh, coherently, they're, by themselves, they're not right. There's nothing wrong with them. Allah is just saying that this life consists of these five things, categorizes this dunya into five things. And one of the the uh, the, the, the or the scholars of uh, has beautifully explained this 
uh, and said that we can look at this as a development of a human, development of someone that is born as a child and grows up into a to full functioning adult, and it is stages of life as well. So what, when a child is born after the first few weeks, after they you know, are, are, are born, they need to have life. They need to play. That uh, you know, simple things like toys, balls, blocks, you know, pick a boo makes it makes them play. It's part of their development. But as that child grows older, a little bit older, they start understanding a little bit. Now that play is not enough. Not just throwing them in the air is good enough. Not just tickling them is enough. They also need to have some type of stimulus. And this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions lahu. There's entertainment. It's not just play and running and that, but it's entertainment. They're, they have to have a story. They have to have some content to it. Some, something that they can uh, absorb and, and go forward with. But then also, as they grow a little older, Zina is introduced. And what is this Zina? What is this beauty that, that, that Allah is mentioning? Is this age of when we grow into puberty, when they, 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 they understand that it, you know, the play and the entertainment is still there, that amusement and all that is still there, but this new factor is introduced. Now it matters how they look. Now it matters how other things look. They're attracted to other things that look good. Right? Before when, you know, I, I remember my son when he was younger, he was, uh, you know, uh, it didn't ma- uh, you know, it doesn't matter what, what, uh, what shoes he's wearing. If one is on one, you know, not even on the right foot, or if his shirt matches his, his uh, jeans, or how his hair is, it doesn't matter, as long as he can go and play. As long as he can go and have fun. But now, all of a sudden, it's taking 20 minutes to make sure that one hair is in the right direction. Making sure in that direction that jab is just that perfect one. Making sure that how uh, people, you know, your, your room looks to someone else. How your backpack looks. Making sure your clothes have the right logo on them. It matters now. It's not like those other things went away, but you know, it's the stage of life. And then after that, Allah mentions that you know, we get a little older, a little older, we start understanding our bodies. But now it's wazina, uh, uh, wazina, after zina, wa tafakhum baynakum. We need to show ourselves. We are independent. I am myself. I am who I am. You develop an identity. You want to know how other people view you. Right? And you can uh, equate this to, to children in the high school and, and, and college years. Right? Now it doesn't, you know, the focus is on establishing oneself. Oh, I got my, I got my first apartment. I got my first car. Look at my car. The key is hanging out of the pocket. You know, I did this. I got my first job. It matters. You, you bring that up. That's your priority now. And subhanAllah, you know, that, that age, you know, they'll give up everything just so that other pe- people think bigger of them. They'll prioritize so that people will look at them in a way that is better. And then the final stage that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is fil This competition of gaining and establishing wealth and children. Right? The stage before this, you would give up all this wealth just so you would look good. You would buy, you know, buy beyond your needs. You'd get the, the car beyond. you get the, the, the house beyond your needs just so that people think of you, oh yeah, you're successful. Oh yeah, you're somebody. But at this age, they'll give up everything just to have that wealth. You'll give up what people think of you. You'll give up what, what's right, what's wrong, just so that you can get this wealth. Just so I have this much wealth. I have something I can, you know, not so necessarily take with you, but this is what, you know, you find as successful. So Allah boils this down into these five things. But Allah goes saying, okay, I established or I mentioned that this dunya is these five things. Let me give you an example. As they can be, you know, how we are... Uh, how we can get deceived by it. كَمَثَلِ غَيْثٍ أَعْجَبَ الْكُفَّارِ كَمَثَلِ غَيْثٍ أَعْجَبَ الْكُفَّارِ نَبَاتُهُ ثُمَّ يَهِيهِ فَتَرَاهُ مُسْفَرَاهُ So that the example of this is as a farmer. Now I know in our day lives we are, we're not very involved uh, you know, in, its, in, in farming and it's not a daily life but we understand the concept that this uh, farmer sees this rain 
this beautiful, perfect rain. And the word that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose is life. And the tafsir talked about life as, uh, you know, the, the language of Arabic is so comprehensive that it describes not just rain, there's many words for rain, but says, Allah chooses the word life, which is very specific to saying that it's perfect rain. It is not rains that flood. It is not rains that's too little or too acidic. It is not rain that was brought down as punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for many other uh, you know, people that brought the rain down as punishments. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this farmer received this life, this perfect rain. And why is he happy? His money, you know, like eye, in his eyes, he's very, very happy, right? The reason why he's saying is that it is showing him his potential. Uh, money that he can create or potential success that he can obtain, right? That farmer gets paid once a season, once a harvest. He puts in all this effort. He digs the land, he buys the seed, he, you know, he, he makes sure the soil is perfect, he makes sure that there's enough water, that the elements are not too much, there's no pests. He does all this work. And with this rain, he's seeing that glimpse. He's seeing not even not even the success. He's not he doesn't have that fruit in his hand. He doesn't have that harvest. He's seeing an indicator that there's some success coming, and he is just overjoyed. He's just so happy. He wakes up and he sees those little little you know sprouts coming off the ground, and he's super happy because it's an indication that oh I'm going to get paid, right? And just like the you know the first portion of the ayah, it's very very. Uh, uh, you know, chronologic, chronological. But what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says next? Uh, so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, Instead of, logically, the next word should be that he harvests it. Right? So he sees this, he sees this glimpse, and then it should be a harvest and you should take it. But instead, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, uses the word saying that, uh, uh, like this, uh, like especially when the leaves fall off the ground, those those dried up leaves, they're like garbage. You walk through them, you don't feel anything bad. If you walk through, let's say a, 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 a garden of flowers, you're gonna make sure you don't step on the flowers because you know they have some you know some beauty attached to them. But if you walk through like some dead leaves, you don't even think twice. So Allah, on one side of the ayah, the example of is that glimpse of hope in this in this farmer's eye, and the next word is of this garbage, saying that this is just then it's just garbage, then it's just this refuge on the ground. Where is that? Where is that? Where that farmer takes that harvest? Where is that uh, ability to enjoy from what are the labors of his effort? And that is what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying is that this thing yeah, is. That is the example that Allah saying in this dunya is. And for us, what we can use this example is if we ever want something really bad. And I'll give you my, uh, my, my son's example again. If we go to Target or, or some store and we walk through you know, uh, the toy aisle, which is super hard for any of you that are parents, you know, they want that toy. Or what are they finally want? And I say, okay, you can have this car. If you just look at his face, he is more excited the fact that he has that toy in his hand. He's looking at it. He won't even put it in the cart. He'll just hold on to it. I can, I can open it. No, no, no. We have to open it in the cart. You have to open it when we get home. Just has that in his hand. Won't even do it. He barely wants to give it to even the, uh, the, the, uh, the cashier to pay for it. Right? Don't, don't bag it. I'll take it. You know? Gets in the car. Gets home. And, you know, super excited to play with it. Where's that toy three days later? It's under the sofa, it's on the stairs where, you know, you can fall over it. And you ask him about that toy, and you go to the store, yeah, yeah, that's the blue one, I want the red one. That is the example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given. That we are after this, after this contentment, we're after this joyment from each of our stages. But instead of being able to be happy from what Allah has given us, be content with what Allah has given us, we have to look at the next thing. We see that next car, the new models out, our car starts feeling like, you know, it's breaking down. The new iPhone 13 is out, our, you know, perfectly fine 12 starts seeming too slow. You know, that, alhamdulillah, apartment that we had, we were so enjoyed to get it. 
now seems too small. That is the example of Allah saying that that is what is boiling, boiling down this dunya to be. This dunya is, is, there's one thing after the other, one thing after the other, but what we're after, what our, uh, our souls are after, what that contentment we are after, we will not find. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala next he says, وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَضْوَانٌ that in the hereafter there is a severe punishment on one hand or the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah mentions one word after that. وَرِضْوَانٌ If you look at the grammatical source of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have said وَمَغْفِرَةٌ وَرِضْوَانٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ but Allah put Ridwan or contentment at the end of the verse. And the reason why is because it stops there. Where will we get that contentment? Will we get it in this dunya? Will we get it in what we're chasing after, whether that's play, that entertainment, that beauty, that competition, that, that believing of oneself? Will we find what we're looking for in all these stages in this world? No. There's either from all of these stages will either be able to take a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or will we be able to get the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be blessed with contentment and contentment that is everlasting so subhanallah Allah ends the ayah the last portion of the ayah and life is nothing but an enjoyment of the delusion it's a mirage what we thought was success, what we thought was happiness, what we thought we were chasing after is just an illusion, it's just a mirage. And what we are truly after, that happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that contentment that Allah is happy with us, that contentment that we are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah, that is truly what we are after. So in the last two minutes that we have, inshallah, we want to see what can we do. It is all theoretical. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautifully lays out what this dunya is made out of, what categories that we can chase after. What can we do? It is that, is this in any way saying that we cannot enjoy from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us? It is saying, and Allah mentioned anything that we should not do any of these things? He's saying, in essence, is it actually part of your development? It is part of life for every human being. But what Allah is saying is just remember where your priorities are. And we have to do this with everything. When we're doing our studies as we're younger, remember why we're doing this. When we're doing, when we're going out and, 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 and enjoying the beauty or playing, remember why we're doing this, where those limits are. When we're enjoying the beauty, enjoy and know where we, those things are. When we are establishing ourselves and having our own identity, remember what that identity comes from. When we're competing for wealth and children, remember we have to keep within the bounds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we have to uh, make sure that those are benefiting us for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The idea is, the idea for us inshallah is to gain from those things. To be able to learn from those things as uh, those are necessary for development. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to not get distracted by this dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not allow us to not fall into this delusion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to help those that are maybe struggling some, with those, some of those uh, things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from, from, from His punishment and, and instead allow us to be amongst those that are from the maghfir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that can be of those that are gaining from the contentment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين أما بعد فيا معشر المسلمين uh, I just wanted to, uh, before uh, finishing off the khutbah, inshallah, I just want to remind you, I came from the city of Corona, and alhamdulillah, we have a center out there, 
And I wanted to just uh, give a small reminder that Alhamdulillah we are uh, expanding and wanting to pay off some of the uh, the hasana there. So we have a booth outside if, if you want to contribute, inshallah. And if you want, most of you, mashallah, already know about the organization Ikna and, and what we do. So inshallah, if we can uh, support us in any way. So jazakallah khair. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد بعدد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد بعدد من قعد وقام اللهم صل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين وعلى إبادك الصالحين اللهم أيد الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واجعلنا منهم واخذل من خذل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا منهم اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم ثبتنا على الإسلام اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأكبر أكبر السلام So I said to him, I'll have to be doing straight in the lines, shoulders to shoulders, inshallah. Make sure we fill up the first rows before we start a new row. Inshallah, turn off any distractions during the salah. Allahu Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حاميا تسقى من عين آنيا ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعما لسعيها راضيا في جنة عاديا لا تسمع فيها لاضيا فيها عين 
جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمالك مسفوفا وضرابي مبثوثا أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والتين والزيتون وطور سينين وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددنا أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمدا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم Thank you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the khutbah. May Allah accept from Hafid Abdul Basit. Abdul Basit is from Corona and he had a project for the masjid, uh, Masjid Amariya. They have a table outside, would like uh, anybody wants to support them. Islamic Learning Foundation and IIT presenting a program for series of four sisters, a Muslim blueprint, prophetic character, instructor Asra Hassan and Ustada Zakia Khalil. Uh, class is still going on. Tonight will be at 7 p.m. Quran Tafsir class by Chef Ahmed Umarji every Monday after Isha prayer. Uh, ICH having an open house on November 20th at 1 p.m. Dr. Sabil is, uh, will be the speaker there. And if you have your neighbor or non Muslim who wants to show uh, the place, uh, Islamic Center Hatun, please invite them. That will be a good opportunity for Dawa for everyone. Uh, there is a request from Brother uh, Masood Arshad. He is having a surgery. He, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him a speedy recovery. Okay. These Thank you.